With new drone rules coming into effect next month, what do users need to know? Well, one Christchurch man is navigating the regulations to make it simpler for all. Here's Jared McCulloch. It's a change many drone users haven't got to grips with, with an aviation consultant working to educate operators about the new regulations. In the next few days, unmanned aircraft rules will take effect across the country, designed to help combat a number of incidents with drones and to keep everyone safe. And the aviation devices says now's the time for the change, with popularity going up. With these drones coming on board, and especially around the world, they're becoming more and more, they're getting larger and larger, they can go further, they can do more things. And one of the big issues is when they're flying in amongst where aircraft or helicopters are flying, um, then they become a big issue um, because if the aeroplane or the helicopter doesn't see them, it can hit them and damage. There are two parts to the new rules that users will need to know about. But he says the real problem will be around which regulation a drone operator complies with. And he says many users will fit into what's known as Part 101. Which is to do with model aircraft and things like that. And most of them, a lot of them would fit into that criteria. Still have to comply to certain parts of the rules, but not as deep as what the Part 102 rule states. Small unmanned aircraft that's under 25 kgs must be operated only in daylight and needs to be visible to the remote control operator. Plus, if the lightweight drones need to go above the regulated height of 120 metres, users would need to obtain a Civil Aviation Authority certification requesting to operate. But Waterland says it would come at a cost, unsure of how much it will be yet, something many users may not be sure of. CAA have had many reports of drones creating incidents or, or areas of that. I know of at least two that the people I deal with have had problems with drones wanting to fly in the area and um, helicopters not seeing them or something like that. He says there's also confusion about the consent process. The rules under Part 101 states users must have consent from anyone you want to fly above and have the consent of the property owner or person in charge of the area you want to fly above too. Some people are going to be wondering what is really happening and what I need to do. Um, I've already spotted the thing on a forum where people are asking questions now about can I fly this or can I not fly it or where can I fly it or where I cannot fly it um, and that's one of going to be the big issues that, that is going to come out of it. But he says there are other concerns as well. Height is one of the ones, um, the other one is the size of the machine because anything over 25 kgs flying around can do damage. However, he says it's a step forward to keeping manned aircraft safe, but the rules would need to be reviewed again as time goes on. What they actually CAA do, that in five years' time, if someone gets a certificate now, in five years' time they've got to, they've got to reapply for that certificate as well. The new rule will come into effect this Saturday, with the aviation experts hoping the change will be a flying success. Jared McCulloch, CTV News.